Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, I'm going to be talking about the five things that you shouldn't do when you buy your brand new racket. Stay tuned. Okay. All right, guys. So you just chose a brand new racket to purchase, whether it be demoing it first or you knew exactly what you wanted and you walk back into the store or you go online, right? And you say, oh, look, that's what I wanted. My new radical. Okay. So what happens next? Well, if you walk into a store, they're going to be like, okay, so how do you want it strung? what string and what tension and you wouldn't believe how many people just kind of like Ooh, i don't know um bad answer okay so a lot of the people that are out there will kind of just stick you with like like a prince synthetic gut or a wilson synthetic gut you know or something equivalent so this is just basic synthetic gut no frills, right? We don't want no frills. We want a good string. You just bought a great racket. At least get a good string in there, right? Don't settle for just synthetic gut. Um, I know, I know there are some that are decent, but don't settle for this. Okay. Don't settle for this. At least, at least do a little bit of exploration. Do a little bit of research right? The least you should be getting is like head velocity. Crisp playing string, definitely better, way better than regular synthetic gut or gamma TNT, okay? Pick one of these strings if you don't know. At least it'll be a higher quality and better playing string than your basic stuff, okay? So do a little research or if you've watched this video, Go for one of these, okay? This will be better than the stuff they, they're probably going to give you. Um, the next thing is, so now you've got your racket, okay? And you get some good strings in there. So this is a hybrid. Uh, take off the plastic, okay? Take off the plastic. You wouldn't believe in my 32 years of doing this that how many times uh, I've taken off overgrip and have found the plastic underneath here. Uh, I found one yesterday, and that's kind of what spurred on this video. Uh, the person who owned the banana arrow that I was uh, re-gripping and re-stringing basically put layers upon layers of overgrip over the plastic. By the time I got to the plastic, I removed four layers of overgrip, and I was like, whoa, the plastic is still on here, right? So now, like, remove the plastic. I know, it sounds ridiculous, right? But people do it. They, they forget to take this off. Okay, so that's rule number two. Take the plastic off, okay? Rule number three. I know everybody does this. I know. You take your brand new racket with my favorite grip on here, Hydrazor Pro. And you cover it. You take some overgrip and you cover the grip. We don't need to do that anymore. I know back in the leather days, you know, it's slippery. You know, it's hard on your hand. But these are great grips. Play with it first. Wear it in a little bit first. Wear it out first before you cover it. Because you're basically ruining two grips at the same time by covering it with an overgrip because what's going to happen is you're going to sweat through this and it's going to sweat into here. When you rip this off, this is going to be soiled too. So at least use this, at least use it once, twice, three times before throwing an overgrip on it. Give it a chance. These grips, at least this grip is wonderful. Give it a shot. I personally don't use an overgrip. I love to use this because it's neutral. It's not too tacky not too dry, right? The next thing, number four, is, guys, 
I see people still using head tape. So the stuff you put over the head, okay? I mean, unless you are really one of those people who scrape the crap out of the racket, you know, basically drag it like my seven-year-old, right? We don't need to use this. We really don't need to use this. I mean, unless you're, yeah, like a kid, okay? You're walking around, da, 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 right? Basically scraping it all over the place. Because this is going to add weight to your racket, and you know, we're going to have to take it off when we string it anyways. So unless you are one of those extreme people who basically dig, like, mining for gold, okay? We don't need to use this. And lastly, right, I understand with kids... They want to decorate their racket. They want to distinguish their racket from others, right? So they put dampeners on it, okay? So I understand that with kids. And I semi-understand that with adults. But try the racket out before throwing a dampener on it because there are dampening features in almost every racket now. Um, I understand that you guys maybe don't like the pinging noise from the racket and this kind of mutes the the sound but or, or a bunch of you think that this thing that's about five dollars is going to heal your tennis elbow um, is not that easy and is not that simple okay I know they call it a vibration dampener but it's not an elbow saver okay uh, if that was true right? This wouldn't be $5. So before you throw that dampener on there, like you usually do, try it without. You'll get more feel from the racket. Okay. You can always buy one, throw in the bag, but before you put one on, try the new rackets, especially these new rackets that are out today. They are much, much better with vibration dampening than they used to be. Okay. So those are the five things that you shouldn't do when you purchase a new racket. All right, let me know uh, what you guys normally do or if you guys have more suggestions as to uh, you know what your experiences are, okay? Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.